when uh, Chris Wenke is picked off by Anthony Smith, the rookie, who makes the pick and then uh, does a little high step. And, oh, oh boy, was uh, that a tribute? Again, guys, welcome again to another edition of the End Zone Club, where our purpose is pushing kids from purpose to potential and to make it happen today. I've got one of my favorite, favorite speakers, motivational speakers that I've ever had a chance to work with in my life. And that is Dr. Anthony Smith. And as you guys know, I really think to give a man his proper respect, you got to give him a good introduction. So who else to give a better introduction to Dr. Smith and Ant himself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My good brother, Ant. I appreciate you having me on, man. I, I really do. And if you don't mind, uh, I have to do something special for you because I got a lot of family from Youngstown that when okay. they see your face, they <laughs> are, man, they're going to represent. So if you would kind of tell us a little bit about who you are, where you come from, and some things you've done career-wise. Yeah, uh, so Anthony Smith uh, from Youngstown, Ohio, born and raised. Uh, Vaughn and Rogers, everybody know what, what Vaughn and Rogers is, man. That, that's where, uh, you know, our youth football, that's where we played all of our youth football at. And uh, a lot of guys from that area blossomed and, you know, got a chance to play in the NFL uh, from that parking area. But uh, from there... I moved to Hubbard, Ohio with my uncle when I think I was about 13. And um, from there, went on to Syracuse. And then, obviously, I uh, got my chance to play my uh, six years professionally. Awesome. Now, for those of you who don't know the story of, of Dr. Smith, he's a very accomplished athlete, having won two Super Bowls. Actually, it's ironic, you know, because I got a chance to watch you with the Steelers, my father-in-law. Big Steelers fan. And I watched you in real time because I, if I remember right, you played with one of my favorite LSU Tigers and Ryan Clark. Was he on that team with you guys? Yes, sir. RC was on that team with me. That's big. Boy. Awesome. Yes, sir. Now, I'm trying to remember, was Mike Tomlin, was he like a defensive coordinator on that team then? No, uh, he was a – he came in on the offensive side because we still had Coach LeBeau. So, yeah, yes, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, that's a legend within well, itself. All right, what you going to do with Coach LeBeau? So, uh, nothing, so he, nothing so, but so, learn. Exactly. So, he just came in and, uh, you know, did most of his time over there on the offense. But, uh, you know, still uh, came into the defensive meeting rooms and, you know, listening in on what we were doing and still had his hand on it. But it, it was it was all uh, Coach LeBeau, definitely. Awesome. I've been I, I've always laughed at Coach uh, Tomlin because I said, you know what? Him and Omar Epps look just alike. Yeah, now, that's just <laughs> did y'all ever mess with him about stuff like that? Yeah, man, we just crack our little jokes and uh, all that good stuff. Man. Yeah, we all, we all got our looking like definitely. For sure. <laughs> well, and something I have admired about you working with you through the various football camps we work with is you're a guy you set a standard early with the kids you don't let there be a whole lot of joking around a lot of crazy stuff like you set that precedent with the kids where you let them know what you expect from them if you don't mind i want you to talk about the difference with these young athletes between hard work versus talent uh man hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard you know what i mean i, like I say that. that i say that for y'all again Hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. You know, uh, like you said, man, there's some guys who wake up gifted. Um, but and when we're little, we had that advantage over kids and all that other stuff. But, you know, there comes a time where, where hard work and development and growth starts kicking in and the guy who was less talented, who was working hard and developing those skills that he didn't have that the kid who was born would have had, but he stopped working. He then catches this kid and then, you know, that's when uh, the infamous song, uh, I know everybody know the line, the, the, the 50 cent line, dang yeah. homie, high school, <laughs> you was the man, homie, what the heck right. happened to you? You know, you right. start working hard. That's the only thing that happens. You start working hard. And uh, a lot of guys get caught up in that. You know, they get uh, they get these rankings and um, start listening to other people and heads start getting big, you know, having a little success. Uh, you know, we've all ran into it, but different guys handle it different based on, you know, who who you're around and 
you know, your your uh, your support system. So I definitely, man, will will take a guy who works hard all day, you know, over a guy who's talented, and I know I can't depend on him uh, for four quarters or whatever the time length may be. Absolutely. You know, and that's something even as a father, my wife and I, we're really trying to get into our own youth that, you know, a lot of times the devil is in the details, right? The difference between good players and great players while everybody else is partying, a good player is at the party, but a great player is out working on his craft. Yes, sir. And I think that's a, a very important lesson. But now I want to turn another another page here because I actually learned something from watching you. You're one of the first athletes that I heard talk about a meal plan. And if I'm thinking right, are you vegetarian? Yeah, I'm a vegan. Yep. You know, and, and to me, that's a challenge because in the South, you know, we love barbecue. We love good food. But watching you talk day in and day out about a meal plan, that lets me know that we are what we eat. Do you mind talking to the young athletes the importance of what they invest in their body? Yeah, absolutely. I like to uh, give an example I always use when I talk to the young kids um, in reference to a high-performance car, a, a race car, a Formula One car, a NASCAR, a, a, a Bentley, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, all these high cars, expensive cars that we all know are high-octane cars, meaning you can't put there's 87, 91, and 93 at the gas pumps. Right, you can't put 87 in the 93 gas tank, and that's what I try to relay, you know, to the athletes. Like, yo, you're a high performance car, man. You need high octane, high fuel, you know, the best of the best. But you know, when you put 87 in your 93 tank, eventually, you know, uh, I don't know if you ever driven a high performance car, but if you guys know and know anybody who has one, they'll tell you if you put regular gas in the engine, it'll shut down. Yes, sir. So. So I tell them eventually, man, your body will shut down and you won't be able to perform, you know, uh, to your highest ability. Now, we've all then uh, went through it uh, and, and performed. But I think definitely, man, uh, in my career, when I started to switch over, um, it definitely was a difference, man. I had more energy and just understand right. the, understanding the process of breaking down meat. You know, it right. takes three to four days to, to a four to five, depending on what type of meat it is to break down. And if you're eating meat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's just, you know, meat stacking on top of meat. Uh, and then mm. understanding, man, once I got to the point and, and got out of, where do you get all your protein from? You know, meat, right. meat, meat, right. meat, but okay, you eat cow and you eat ox and all this other, what do they eat? You eat deer meat, all this, what do they eat? They eat grass. So just cut out the middleman. You're getting a second source of protein, you know, that you're thinking that you're thinking is the first hand, you know, source of protein. But just cut out the middleman, go straight to the plant. And, you know, that's what I did. And, uh, you know, from there, man, I just been feeling better and everything, man, just been on the up and up. Honestly. And I think and I think especially in, in certain communities, uh, we probably don't realize how important that our health is. You know, health is wealth. And a lot of times we're getting out of it what we're putting into it. And by the time guys are reaching our age, you know, high blood pressure and a lot of things are a problem. So honey buns and sodas don't don't do anything for us. But right. and with that said, I want I've got one last question for you and I'm going to let you go. But with the wisdom you have attained in life now, all the life experiences and things you've been through, what's one thing that you would say to the younger you? One thing that I would say. Uh, and man, you, you, you have me. This is a good one. Um, take advantage of every opportunity. Um, a lot of the times there, there were times, um, now thinking back on it in my career and stuff, the majority of them I did take advantage of, but I think, you know, um, uh, things like, uh, uh, networking, you know, I networked a little bit, but I think that's a tool if I would have focused on it a little bit more and, uh, and, and and utilize that a little bit more, you know, it makes you a more powerful person and um, not not necessarily being in those moments and understanding where I was and like, okay, I had to get to this point to where everybody's not going to make it, but 
the guys who don't make everybody's going to be a professional at something. Yes, sir. So, so getting that, you know, in college, you, you're you not really looking at it like that. You know, like I said, I had to grow to that point, but understand, overstanding it now, that's what I would tell my younger self, man. Just uh, uh, enjoy the moments, man. Take advantage of the opportunities and, and, and network, man. And uh, uh, just network with people, man, because you never know, you know, where people are going to end up, man, over, over a period of time, man. Guys, you say in sports, it has to end at some point, you know. So yes, the guy, you may spend 10 years playing in the NFL and you may, a college classmate, you know, may spend 10 years either developing his own business or 10 years working his way up through another business. Now he may be a CEO at a top company. Now you need, you know, something to do after your career is over because you got to do something. You can't just, you know, sit there and spend money all day. You get bored, you'll go crazy, but you need something else to do you know, after you retire from the game. So uh, having those connections and having that network to allow you to be able to pick and choose and explore and, you know, uh, experience different things, man, is something that's, you know, uh, I think is very, very valuable, man. And that's one thing that sports gives you, man, is that that networking power, man, because you're meeting people and joining with guys from all over, man. So definitely. Absolutely. Something I'll say this, the military always pushes in us that every day is an interview. Everybody you meet may be kind of like a bridge to your next opportunity. So I, you know, I'm listening to that and I'm also taking it to heart because I'm realizing that more and more is yes, that uh, you never know who you're connected to. That might be my next blessing or vice versa. So yes, with that said, and I thank you for your time. Uh, keep doing what you guys are doing in the community with the trenches and working with the youth and man, this won't be the last time, my brother. Yes, sir. Everybody follow us, battlewithatrenches.com. And anytime you need me, man, call me. You know, I'll be there for you, brother. I appreciate yes, sir. I'm, I'll shoot you a message after that. And guys, be sure, same time, same place next week, follow us. Y'all have a yes, good sir. day. All right. Well, your boss can cost you a position. It can cost you a job. It can cost you an opportunity. Just like Coach said, if I got uh, uh, 15 recruits here on an official visit, Right? And we're, we're doing a seminar talking about the school and there's a couple of recruits over there like not really paying attention. Then you got some other recruits, recruits over there looking at everybody paying attention, tuned in. If they have to decide who they're going to get that final scholarship to, guys, who do you think they're going to give it to? The guy who's paying attention, the guy who's sitting up, the guy who being uh, punctual, the guys who, who's looking at the, the, the speaker in the eye, right? So understand, fellas, understand how important posture is, and like Coach said, the language that it speaks, right? <laughs>